As a pediatrician, we watch the cognitive development of children. There are four basic stages. There's one called sensory motor between the birth to age two, preoperative stage between two and six, concrete operational stage between seven and 11, formal operative stage between 12 to adulthood. The sensory motor state, birth to two, pediatricians watch these children very carefully, going from a lying to sitting to standing position to more complex situations, sometimes saying two to three were since by the age of two. If for some reason there is any concern about the child having delay, we will get the child in some kind of a early intervention program. But then what it gets a little bit fuzzy is when the kid gets about two years old, not up to the age of six, they have a pre-operational type of stage. Can you define that a little bit more? Well, basically when the child starts to turn two, obviously they're starting to develop language and they're starting to um, be able to uh, manipulate things, understand things better, of course, than just being in the, in the sensory motor stage when they're a year or two old. But they still are having trouble uh, really understanding um, concrete logic, um, building in, induced inductive reasoning. So they tend to uh, be able to understand certain things, but not they can't string them together in their minds. They make it this like visual of the world a little bit. Yeah, they get in the head. They're not quite doing much more than that. Is right. that correct? So they form they form kind of different concepts, maps of the world, language enters into it as well, and they have these different schemas. And very often, what you'll find is that a child will develop certain scheme or about something and the, the adult will assume that the child then understands everything else involved with that concept and then they're very surprised when the child doesn't understand something that might seem very very elementary it even sometimes becomes a psychological issue because the, ch the ch I get a lot of parents who will say certain things well oh, the child's doing it willfully intentionally because they've understood one thing but they don't understand how it applies to something else they haven't been able to connect the dots a yet. lot of psychological diseases can't get labels in this age because they're not really ready to get to the next yes. level of mental development. Is that yes. correct? Yes, right. That's why you have a delay in making diagnosis. Yes. I said, well, how come the kid, was my kid born with this? Maybe, but we had to say the kid developed. Yes. It's not quite the story yet. Yes. You only had the first act. You have to get the second and third act. See what's going on. Then kids, kids about seven, not really a teenager, maybe up to the age of 11. They get this concrete operational state. What is that about? Okay. Well, that's where they can understand things in terms of, we say, black and white, cowboys and Indians, good guys, bad guys. Um, their brain at that point is capable of making a crude distinction, kind of a dichotomy. So something's either good or bad, hot or cold. They don't necessarily understand abstract thinking, hypothetical thinking, nuance. And this becomes a big issue in my practice because the parents that come to me will always say to me, the child knows better. The child knows it was right or wrong and they should know better and they assume everything's intentional. And I try to explain to the parent that that the child at this point is only understanding in terms of being bad and good. They don't understand the deeper, more hypothetical, more abstract reasoning like it's the right thing to do, it's the moral thing to do. And they talk to their children as if the child is capable of really understanding this high level moral development. And uh, Piaget who came up with many of these schemas, he also came up with the development of how one thinks about morality. And it really isn't until someone is way into their adolescence that they have a true ability to understand morality, to do things for the common cause. For That's why it's very hard to label a kid with major psychological diseases, even at this point, yes. is that correct? Yes, very much so. And then you get this formal operational stage, which mm -hmm. is basically teenagers. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Okay. Um, this is where they start to develop the ability to reason. They can not just see schema or see ideas and concepts, and especially in terms of black and white. They now can see nuance. They can start to actually create their own way of thinking. They can make a judgment about what they can evaluate what they're being taught or what's being instilled in them. And so very often teenagers go through this phase when they first develop it that it's such a new fascinating skill for them that they're, it's feeling that, first of all, they can challenge their parents. They don't have to just, they don't just take what their parents say uh, as being wise and true. And that's why we get a lot of teenage rebellion, because too many parents... Until the end of the teenagers, a lot of the emotional diseases grows a little bit sooner than boys start to manifest. 
Yes. Yes. Okay, because the, the, the brain is at a certain maturation. Right. So when Pellman puts these diagnoses kind of early, I don't know if it's right. It's, and I you think have an you have to reevaluate this whole way of thinking. Yes, you have an excellent point. Uh, a lot of these diagnoses are made with no real concern or consideration of where the child is at cognitively. And um, again, and then how, and then in turn, once you make those diagnoses and you start acting on them, uh, you can be doing harm to the child. And the child often tries to tell you. They try to, and that, but again, it's often seen as rebellion. It's not being taken seriously enough. So if, if a child is a criminal at age, say, 14, they cannot treat the kid like an adult if they're being honest about it. Yes. They don't think the same way as an adult. Even though the evil result might be the same, the thinking behind it may not. Sometimes the police don't understand that. We try to get that across. They think the kid is just like an adult, and it isn't a mini adult. It's a kid that's developing. Something happened. And we have to understand that not quite the same way that you think it's wrong. Yeah. I cannot make sense of this thing where they actually will use the term that the child is being charged as an adult. It's it's an oxymoron. How can that be? It's, it's, a, it's a paradox. It's a contradiction. How can you charge a child as an adult? A child does not have the mental cognitive development that an adult has. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that nothing is done to educate, rehabilitate, um, uh, keep the, keep society safe. But to use that phrase, and, and it creates such ignorance, and there was a time many years ago, and, it, and, and it's become politically un, uh, out of favor, where yes, children were tried as children, and it was seen as they were malleable, and that they had potential to be rehabilitated, and that you couldn't just charge them as if they were an adult making a conscious decision. But that seems to have gone by the wayside.